Hello again, I'm going to talk about the image sprite heading property in App Inventor today and how to make a simple procedure to simplify using this property in your apps. The heading property can be used to move an image sprite in a specific direction on the canvas if the speed property has a non-zero value. The heading property can also be used to rotate an image sprite to a specific heading if the rotate property is set to true. In this tutorial I'm going to focus on rotation of an arrow image sprite. The demonstration app allows me to drag my finger on the canvas to change an arrow image sprite's heading using the canvas drag block and the image sprite point and direction block. So using the emulator I'm just going to drag this arrow basically what we want it to do. Uh, in, in App Inventor, angles are measured in degrees. The arrow image sprites rotates property is set to true in this example. A heading of zero degrees is the default value and it's to the right of the arrow. Adding 45 to the heading rotates the image right 45 degrees counterclockwise. Subtracting 45 degrees from the heading rotates the image right 45 degree degrees clockwise. Notice that the heading can be negative when the degrees is less than zero. Notice also that decimal places are displayed when I drag. In this example we don't need that degree of accuracy so I'll be using the math round block to round to the nearest whole degree and that will be sufficient. And what it's doing is it's going to allow us to round off the heading set by a point and direction before displaying it in the heading label. Here's some examples how the round block works. Round 3.14159 rounds to 3. Round 3.5 rounds to 4. But round 2.5 rounds to 2. That's called round to even. It gives a better average result than always rounding up when the decimal value is 0.5 and the whole number value is an even number. Okay, so we're going to modify the canvas one drag block to round off the value returned by point in direction and that will be stored in heading labels. So let's try that now. There, that's much better. This app also allows the arrow to be turned either clockwise or counterclockwise by 45 degree steps. And that's how that works. Suppose you want to make a compass app. You want the user to be able to turn in any direction while holding the device and have the arrow show the current heading. We'll simulate that by using the plus and minus buttons with the emulator. Okay, so we're going to start, we're going to go around the dial. Notice when I pass 360 it keeps increasing.
when I rotate it in the clockwise direction by subtracting 45 degrees it becomes negative and it also can fall below minus 360. Although the heading property can store large positive or negative degree values, it would be simpler to have the value always be in the 0 to 360 range. Why? Why would we want to do that? Suppose we want to know if the compass arrow is pointing up to the 90 degree mark. You could have some test blocks like this here to test it. So let's try using do it and the arrow image sprite heading is not pointing to 90 so let's fix that. Okay. Alright so it is pointing to 90. Now we're going to make the arrow point up again, but we're going to be rotating clockwise. So it's pointing in the same direction, but you see the heading is now minus 270 rather than 90. So if we're testing for 90 degrees, it's going to be false. Both cases, the arrow was pointing up to the same heading, but the heading values are different. They're actually just multiples of 360 degrees of each other. It would be nice to always have the heading be 90 when it's pointing up and to have the arrow always be in the range from 0 to less than, but not including, 360 degrees. The way to do that is by using the math modulo block. The math modulo block works like a clock face in that its output is limited to a range of numbers. In this case, we'll make a procedure that combines the round block with the modulo block and test that in the app. We want the range to be from 0 to up to, but not including, 360. So here's what the normalized procedure looks like. and the modulo block. Whatever our degrees are that we pass to the, the, through the normalized procedure, that the modulo of that is compared to 360. If it's less than but not including 360, it returns that value. It, this corrects negative and values that are larger than the absolute value of the number that's less than 360. So let's add those to our procedures. That will be, we'll replace that with this one because round is already included in this procedure here. We will replace this. When we add 45 degrees, we will normalize that value. And when we subtract 45 degrees, we will normalize that value. So let's turn again to 90 degrees. And now we're going to turn in the opposite direction. Notice we're not showing negative degrees anymore here. We're showing 315, which is what we would expect. And when we turn clockwise to 90 degrees instead of minus 270 now we get 90. So this simple procedure 
allows us to keep our degree measures in a range that makes it easier for us to test. Now let's come back to this where we want to test for an ID. Okay. Now we had turned counterclockwise which previously gave us minus 270. Now it's giving us 90. 90 is actually stored in the heading so our comparison here is true. Now, this is not the arrangement that you would use if you were making a compass app, because in a compass, 0 degrees or 360 is north, 90 is east, 180 is south, and 270 is west. Can you see a way to adjust the value that's stored in the heading so that you can use this as a compass. If you can do that, then you'll be well on your way to making a compass app. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something and as always, happy inventoring.